the coronavirus pandemic has shut down movie theaters across the country. With people bound to their homes, they're streaming more than ever. And some Hollywood studios are releasing some films direct to streaming services and digital platforms, shaking up a distribution model that's been in place for decades. The theaters are saying, you're taking advantage of a crisis here. And the studios are saying, no, we're meeting consumers where they are, and a lot of them are stuck at home. This trend away from theaters and toward digital platforms began years ago. But experts say the pandemic could accelerate that shift. Here's how. This is the path a film typically follows as it's distributed in the U.S. The top big five studios own the legal rights to movies they produce, and they distribute them to several destinations. Say a film is made and distributed by Sony. Normally, the distributing studio makes deals with movie theaters, like AMC, to organize a wide theatrical release to over 3,000 screens. Theaters traditionally have exclusive rights to show the film for 75 to 90 days, a period known as the theatrical release window. After that window ends, the film usually goes to digital platforms like Apple or Amazon, where it might be available for digital rental or purchase. Later, the film is distributed again at a lower price and may become available on DVD or Blu-ray. Finally, the studio can sign a deal with Netflix or another third-party streaming service or head to cable channels like HBO. But the coronavirus crisis is shaking up that model. Take Trolls World Tour. <clears throat> yeah, yes, Papa Fur? On April 10th, Universal Pictures digitally released the film straight to platforms like Apple TV for $19.99 for a 48-hour digital rental, bypassing the theatrical opening. So theaters have viewed this as a philosophical and an existential threat for many years. They want to safeguard that exclusivity window because they know that it is still one of the main reasons people go to the theater, right, is because they're showing movies you cannot see anywhere else. And the experimentation over the last several weeks with the theaters closed has really been a source of friction between studios and exhibitors. The move was a gamble, but it paid off. In just three weeks, Trolls World Tour made nearly $100 million in rentals, the biggest opening day and weekend for a digital title ever. NBC Universal CEO Jeff Schell told the Wall Street Journal that the results for Trolls World Tour have exceeded our expectations and demonstrated the viability of PVOD, or premium video on demand. Theaters were less enthusiastic. Whenever Universal announced that they were going to do it with other movies and planning then, this is key, planning to release movies with some more fluidity between theaters and digital platforms, even after theaters reopened, it really became open warfare. AMC CEO Adam Aaron sent an open letter to Universal saying that his theater chain, the largest in the world, would refuse to show any Universal films going forward. Universal's decision to send Trolls World Tour straight to the digital platforms is going to be remembered as a turning point in the relationship between studios and exhibitors, because it's going to force some very hard conversations when the theaters reopen about why that might not be a viable alternative to the exclusive theatrical distribution model. This is all happening at a very bad time for theaters. Analysts predict there will be zero box office revenue in May and a 30% drop for domestic ticket sales this year. Some are predicting that domestic box office earnings will be around $6.7 billion for the year, down from more than $11 billion for each of the past five years, putting 2020 on track to become the worst year for the film industry since 1997. A lot of analysts expect a lot of smaller independent theaters to really struggle through this and potentially have to close. It remains to be seen, though, once theaters reopen, how many screens come back online. At the same time, streaming services are seeing a rise in viewership. In April, Netflix reported 15.8 million new subscribers for the first quarter of the year, more than double their forecast from the year before. Now, the big question is, what is temporary and what is permanent? Do 
consumers say, hey, look, why was I going out to the movie theater at all when I could get all this right here? Or will they be so desperate to go out and get outside of the house, get outside of the living room, that they return to movie theaters with even more vigor than before? That's a real looming question. One thing that's clear is that Trolls World Tour isn't the only movie being released straight to streaming right now. While big budget tentpole movies like Mulan will still have a delayed wide theatrical release, studios are releasing more than a dozen smaller movies direct to digital because of the pandemic. In April, the Academy announced that movies released via streaming would be eligible for the upcoming Oscars just this year because of coronavirus. A, we don't know how comfortable people might be going back to the theater, and B, we don't know how long it might take to get them there. But the other thing that's happened is that because so many of the big movies, the James Bond movies, the Marvel movies, have been pushed to next year, many analysts are saying we might see some cannibalization at the box office next year, too. Experts say that the box office isn't likely to disappear forever. One lesson from the pandemic will be that studios have been emboldened to experiment with these distribution strategies more than they ever were.